Hello and welcome to Let's Talk with Bishop R.C. Blakes. R.C. is an author, empowerment teacher and the proud pastor of the New Home Ministries of New Orleans, Louisiana and Houston, Texas. His message circles the globe. His conversational and candid approach to challenging content makes him a relevant voice to all generations. Get ready for a life-changing transformational conversation. Good morning, good morning, good morning, family. This is your pastor, R.C. Blakes Jr., and I am so excited today to be able to share with you. I've been running a lot. I'm a little tired, uh, but I'm, I'm excited about what God is doing. And I have a word for you today. I have a word for you today that I believe is just going to radically shift your life. I want to talk today about learning to trust God's process learning to trust God's process. You know, I don't know about you, but for me in my life, there have been seasons where I just didn't understand what God was doing. And honestly, I just didn't take the time to trust God's process. And it created, I created more problems than I needed to have because I didn't learn to trust God's process. And I know that there's some of you that are there today, you know, God's process is God's process. And God's, you know, you either work with it, uh, God put it to Paul, you know, a certain kind of way. He said, it's hard for you to kick against a prick. You're not going to win. And you keep fighting God's process and you keep getting outcomes that are not favorable because the person that wins in life is the person that learns to relax and literally trust God's process. The concept of walking by faith is really about trusting God's process. When you, when you look in Romans 1, 17 and it, 1 and 17 and it says the just shall live by faith, that's people who have learned to trust God's process. And Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Trusting God's process. Where are you at with this? Do you think that, have you ever seen seasons in your life where you made a mess of things because you failed to trust God's process. I want to give you three things today that play into learning to trust God's process. Number one it may sound simplistic, but it's very true and very powerful. If you're going to trust God's process, you must train your heart to trust God. You know, I know you love God. I know that you know God. But do you trust God? There's a, there's a story my, my father used to tell of a, of a man that um, was at the Niagara Falls. And he was a tightrope walker. He, he, he would take a wheelbarrow and he'd push the wheelbarrow on the tightrope from one, end of, one side of the falls to the other. He'd come back. And he'd say to the people, how many of y'all believe that I can push this wheelbarrow across the falls on this rope? And everybody exclaimed, they'd just seen him do it. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. They loved the man. He said, you really believe I can do it? You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. He says, well, which one of you all gonna get in the wheelbarrow? And nobody raised their hand. And see, that kind of captures us. You know, we love God. We're excited. But have we really trained our hearts to trust God? And the reason we must train ourselves to trust God is because we are naturally built to trust what we can see. Therefore, we usually put our trust in people and in things, the resources we can see. We're trusting people 
who can't even rely on themselves. And then when the people who can't even rely on themselves let us down, sometimes not intentionally, they're just human, we feel heartbroken when the reality is we should have always trained our hearts to trust God. Hmm. How long did it take me to learn this lesson right here? If you look in Psalms 118, um, 8 and 9, listen to what it says. This is a lesson for some of you. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. You trust normal people. I don't care about people in high places. They can all fail you. They can all let you down. We were just exclaiming about how miserable the former president was. And now we got a new president. Everybody got issues with the new, and you're going to have issues with the next one because even people in high places are human. And when you put your, when you misplace your trust and you put it in to people and things, you're always disappointed. But when you train your heart to trust God, you're now aligning with God's process. You see, because trust is the cure to all anxiety. Trust is like a spiritual sedative for the soul. It calms us when life gets frantic and things become uncertain. It is our trust in God that anchors our hope. That's the beauty of, of, of really training your heart to trust God, is that it keeps you full of hope. And when you can't see anything around you that makes sense, it's your trust in God that says, but it's going to be all right. Listen to what Psalms 27, 13 and 14 says in the Amplified. He says, I would have despaired had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of, in the land of the living. Wait for and confidently expect the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for and confidently expect the Lord. Now, you train your trust by waiting on God. That you just come to this point in your life where you say, okay, I'm not running behind people. I'm not, I'm not banking on folk. I'm not banking on systems. I'm, I'm not banking on my intellect or my financial resources because all of these things fail. I'm going to really sit here and wait on you, God. And it's as you wait on God that you begin to develop a track record with God that makes your heart certain that all things work together for my good. Now, number two, remind yourself to rely on God for everything. This is how you begin to trust God's process. Remind yourself to rely on God for everything. Don't take anything for granted. Don't feel entitled to nothing. Don't feel like you got it under control. How many days have I thought I had it under control? And then overnight, things turn upside down. All the little knowledge I thought I had, the little resources I thought I had, the little connections I thought I had, all that stuff out the window. And then God had to bring me back to a place of consciousness where I realized that things and people are only resources. But my heavenly father is the source. Remind yourself on a daily basis to rely on God for everything. So when things in the natural run out, understand that your uh, pool, your supply is not limited to what you can see. But you, there, there are heavenly windows that are opened over your life. But you got to remind yourself to rely on God for everything. And then you walk by faith and you trust God's process. Because after you've done your part and after you've obeyed God, you must rely on God for provision, for protection, for direction. 
Because ultimately, God is your source. So don't have a, don't have a nervous breakdown before you wake up and remember who your source is. I know you're right there. You, you, you're trying to have a nervous breakdown right now. You've been up all night. You're trying to have a nervous breakdown right now because you have not reminded yourself that God is your source. And how many days has he come through for you? Mm, come on now. He may not come when you want him to come. He usually doesn't. But he's always on time. I'm a living witness. Listen to what Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. And the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. Remind yourself to rely on God for everything. God, I trust you to provide. I trust you. Rely on God. Now, relying on God should be as natural as breathing. That's why Jesus said, pray like this, give us this day our daily bread. He's our source. And he provides for us what? Daily. Relying on God should be as natural as breathing. Father, I trust you. I wait on you. And listen to what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 27. He says, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than clothing? Behold the birds of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Hmm. I was saying, I've never seen a squirrel have a nervous breakdown worrying about if they're gonna be acorns tomorrow. You don't see birds, you know, popping a Xanax, whatever you call this stuff, because they're worrying about, wonder if there's gonna be any worms. Ooh, 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 I've never seen a bird sitting in the tree shivering. What's wrong, little bird? I'm worried because I don't know if there's gonna be any worms for me tomorrow. You know what the bird does? The bird fulfills his assignment, he flies, and the heavenly father provides. The squirrel fulfills his assignment, running across the street causing wrecks, running all up and down the trees, running through the yard, and God provides. If God provides for them, how much more should you and I remind ourselves to rely on God for everything? You're sitting there, and you have a massive need. You have a massive need, a massive financial need. And God has me talking to you prophetically today. You've tried everything you know. You've put, you like the woman with the issue of blood. You've spent everything for 12 years. You've run out, you at the bottom. And now all of a sudden, you're catching a revelation today that God is your source. You've been running behind resources that have been empty, but now you're catching the revelation today that God is your source. And so now God has me saying to you today, watch God. Watch God. Glory to God. Watch God. Watch God. Now, number three, Number three, 
Don't bail God out with your logic. If you're gonna, if you're gonna learn to trust God's process, you're gonna have to train yourself to trust God, not just love him, but to actually trust him, wait on him and watch him do it even when you're shivering. You're gonna have to remind yourself that God is the supplier of everything you need. And then the third thing you gotta do is you're gonna have to stop trying to bail God out with your logic. Lean not to your own understanding, the writer said. How many times have you tried to bail God out? I know I've done it. It created a mess for myself that I never should have had. But getting in the way, feeling like God, you know, he, he, he doesn't understand how, seri how serious this is. If he understood how serious this was, he would have come in here and done something by now. But what you're doing is you're doing the same thing that Abram and Sarah did. God promised them a son, a promised seed, and then Sarah and Abraham concoct something for him to go sleep with the maid, and the maid has a child by the name of Ishmael, outside child now, and then Sarah still gets pregnant like the Lord said she would, and now all this tension in the house. And what does Ishmael represent? Ishmael represents something we produce when we try to use our logic to bail God out. When we feel like God doesn't know what he's doing, God is not strong enough, he's not wise enough, He's not big enough to handle this, so I got to, I got to put my two cents in here and I got to help God out. I was telling the story of my oldest daughter, Venetra, and uh, I was trying to teach her how to swim when she was a child. And I was trying to, we were in the, the low part of the pool where she could stand up, but I was trying to, I had my arms on and I was trying to, hold her and let the, the, the buoyancy or whatever you call that work and tell her to kick her feet and all this, trying to just get her into the motion. This child is so terrified of the water. I, I never, I've never almost drowned in like three, four feet of water before, but I almost drowned that day. That girl grabbed me around my neck. She hollered, <laughs> she grabbed me, wrapped her leg around me. I'm about to pull me and her under. I said, okay. Swimming lessons are over, and we've not touched the pool since. We were laughing about that the other night. That girl like to drown me out there. I'm like, I know what I'm doing. You ain't got to bail me out. I'm here to bail you out. Just trust the process. How many of you are almost about to drown God? You so busy fighting the process. You so busy trying to bail God out. You trying to help God out because it looked like God doesn't know what he's doing. Babe, let me tell you something. God knew what he's doing. He's been doing this a long time. And if you trust him, he's going to show you better than he can tell you. Look what the Bible says in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Stop trying to bail God out. You're not smart enough. You don't know enough. You and I, we only have a fraction of perspective. God has the whole perspective, the end from the beginning. And God says, if you're gonna trust my process, you're gonna to have to stop getting in the way. Stop trying to bail me out with your logic. It's not high enough, it's not deep enough, it's not wide enough. And I love something when you read in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, the enemy is coming upon Jehoshaphat and the, the, the people of God, and it seems like an insurmountable in enemy. And they go before God and they get instruction to really just praise God. People come in to kill him. God says, just praise me. Send you the first. Just praise me. And listen to how the, listen to how the scripture reads in 2 Chronicles 20. 
and 12, it says, O oh, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no, listen to the words, we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon you. We're not going to try to bail you out. All we're going to do is just trust you and watch you. We're going to trust you and we're going to watch you. We're going to trust you and we're going to watch you. And when you read the whole story, you find while they were praising God, God confused the enemy and the enemy turned on themselves and they destroyed one another. And by the time Jehoshaphat and them came up to look, the enemy was dead and they went in for days, they were gathering in the wealth. Who goes to battle with wealth? But when you, when you stop bailing God out and you trust God's process, God will show you better than he can tell you. You got to stop trying to figure it out. While you're trying to figure it out, he's already worked it out. He's already worked it out, you know. So I believe with all of my heart that the Spirit of God had me today to come as we're winding this year down, the year of 2021, to say to you, trust God's process. I know you can't see it. I know you don't feel it. I know it's unsettling. But trust his process. Because we know that all things are working together for our good. And so the Spirit of God is saying to you and I today, trust me even when you can't trace me. You may not be able to see exactly what I'm doing, but trust me, trust me. Father, I thank you today for every person that's under the sound of my voice. And now my prayer, dear God, is that you will by your spirit, hallelujah, give them that reassurance that all is well, that all is well. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Now listen, you We here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you for spending this time with us today. Time with us today. R.C. and Lisa are always honored to have you with us. Don't forget to reach out to us by visiting our website at www.rcblakes.com. While you're there, you may join our mailing list and receive a free download of the Laws of Manifesting Your Vision by R.C. Blakes. Also look at all of the online programs by R.C. You may find all books written by R.C. and Lisa. Once again, all of us here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And as we always say, see you at the top.